name is Barry Sarraf, I'm a partner at Raffingers and I've been asked to talk to you today about the normal questions we get asked when people set up their own companies, particularly income planning around dividends and salaries. Um, it is without doubt the first question almost everybody asks us when they set up their own company uh, and without ever giving a single answer to, to everyone because there's no two people whose circumstances are exactly identical. There are some general rules within that area which we can all kind of follow and understand. In general therefore when it is somebody's main source of income, the income from their company, we would usually give the following advice and for the following reasons. So it's most common uh, to pay a small salary, uh, the small salary being at the level just below the national insurance threshold. And there's a series of reasons for that. Firstly, it's tax free. It uses up part um, the majority of an individual's personal allowance. Uh, so they receive it without paying any income tax. Uh, it is also tax deductible by the company, so the company can treat it as an expense and claim corporation tax relief against it. And in addition, and this is one of the kind of lesser known reasons, it also ensures that the individual pays national insurance at a rate of 0%. And even if you're not a mathematician, I'm sure you can work out that does involve paying actual no cash. But the significance of paying at 0% is it does keep your entitlement to the basic state pension and various other benefits. So uh, that's the reason we pay the salary. Everything over above and above that level of drawings from a company, we would normally uh, pay as a dividend. Now, dividends are paid to shareholders, uh, rather, whereas salaries are paid to directors for their carrying out their duties. Uh, after that, the profits are distributed to shareholders in the form of dividends. Um, the difference between the dividends that we can pay from your own company and those that you might receive if you own shares in a public company is it's the directors who set the dividends, so you get to set your own level of dividend, and that's the reason you have a degree of flexibility. The dividend payment is taxed differently from normal uh, other types of income, like salary. Um, there, firstly, there is no national insurance payments on on dividends, and secondly, they have different tax rates from, as I say, other income. The first thing to bear in mind with dividends is that everybody gets a dividend allowance on top of the personal allowance that everyone gets that if income in the form of dividends the first two thousand pounds is paid tax free income in the basic rate band which would normally be taxed at 20 percent is taxed at 7.5 percent uh high rate instead of 40 at 32.5 and the additional rate which normally 45 is at 38.1 percent um that sounds generous and of course it can be but of course, you don't get a, the company doesn't get a corporation tax deduction for dividend payments, which means those dividends are paid net of a 19% corporation tax charge if it's coming out of the if the dividend payment is out of the current year's income. Of course, some companies have reserves and you can pay dividends out of what's already been taxed, so that 19% will have already been paid in previous years. The other big advantage um, of using companies to pay dividends is. You know, as an alternative to that, people might be self-employed. It means that where a business makes profit, the profits are taxed and, and subject to national insurance on the individual. Uh, that usually means that whether you draw all of the profit out of the business or not, you're taxed on all of it. Uh, and so if, if, like most businesses, you retain some of the profit in the business to fund working capital, using companies and particularly using dividends can involve a much lower tax rate than otherwise would apply.